In part two of our Google Sheets Long-Term Athlete Dashboard project, we're going to begin framing our dashboard by putting in the header bar as well as this completely dynamic athlete card where we can switch the information that we want to see as well as the athlete and it will automatically change to update to our new athlete. Okay, so we're back and just as a quick reminder of how far we got in the last video, if you haven't had a chance to see it, we created all of our athlete info database as well as our data tab and then also our admin panel which houses all of our lists and different things that we're going to need to reference. Now in this video what we're going to start to do is frame out and build our dashboard and our athlete card. So the first thing that I'm going to need to do is just um, create a new sheet. So all I've done is created a blank sheet here and I'm going to need to resize some of the cells. So since I've created this project a couple times now, I know that my column widths, I usually like to have these first three columns be where I'm going to house all of my filters. And then these next three are just some separator columns. And then I'm gonna have a whole bunch of columns over here which are actually gonna house my dashboard. So for our first columns, the way that I like to set them up are column A, I'm just going to right click and resize this column to 125 and then column B and C, right click and resize this column to 175. And this is because throughout the course of this dashboard project, we're gonna have different information that we want to recall in these columns. Then D, E and F, I'm gonna right click, resize, and I'm gonna make these 15. And I just use these as separator columns between all of my filters and then all of the dashboard stuff that I want to put up. And then from G all the way over to W, I'm going to right click and resize these to um, 100, which they already are. So that is going to lay the frame for our actual dashboard. Now in column one, I usually use these first three columns as a filter section. So I'm just going to take column one and I will merge this and color it in black with white text and I'm just gonna put the words filters in there. And I usually bold this as well and just put it right in the middle. Now in terms of setting up this column, I just have to set up a couple of things before I go and put my dashboard together. The first thing being a spot where we can select our athlete name. So I'm gonna do that in A3 and B3. The first thing I need to type is athlete name and it's going to be really important that we use the same name um, column as we're using here because we're going to use a formula that references this by name. So as you can see I've called it athlete name which is the same thing and then because this is going to be a drop down I'm just going to color this a light yellow and that just tells me that there's a spot where I'm going to need to create a drop down and our drop down for our athlete name if I go to athlete name and go over to B3, I'll go to data, data validation, and it's gonna ask me for a list. I'm gonna select the data range and go to my athlete info tab, and I'm just gonna select the A column, and I'm going to select that for my athlete names. And that is going to be where I'll create my dropdown list out of, so now I should be able to select any of those athletes. So from there, now I'm going to start to frame out the actual dashboard. So for me, what I have is three rows from G all the way to W, which I just usually merge and center and color in a dark color, something like um, a dark blue. Whoops, something like a dark blue. And I'll make the text white and I'm going to create um, a formula in here that basically says long-term dashboard with my athlete's name. So in this cell, I'm gonna to go to the formula bar and I'm gonna type equals. Anything I type inside of quotations will show up as text. So I'm gonna say long-term athlete dashboard and I want double dots and a space and then quotation and I want to add the athlete's name. So I'm gonna type and the ampersand and then the cell with the athlete's name and I'll hit enter, and you can see it's gonna say long-term athlete dashboard for athlete one. And if I were to change that, we'll get athlete two, three, etc. 
Now it's just a matter of some formatting. Maybe I'll go up to about 36 font and center that. And you can see that looks pretty good. And as I change this around, you can see the athlete name change. Now the last piece for today is we're gonna create that dynamic athlete card. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is frame this out. So I know that my athlete card goes from um, G6 um, down to 15 and across one. So G6 to H15 and I'm going to merge and center that because that is going to be the area where I actually display um, the athlete photo. And then the next area that I have is just um, two boxes and two boxes. The first one is going to be our drop down list for the things we want to display. And then the second one is going to be where we recall that. So I'm going to copy that and just paste it down a bunch of times. And then I'm going to just add some borders here. So for the picture, if I just add a border on there, and then for this whole spot, if I add a border, now we have a spot where we're actually going to have our athlete card. So the first thing that I want to reference is the athlete picture. So depending on what athlete we pick, we want to be able to go into the athlete info tab and pick that photo. So for that, I'm going to use a function called VLOOKUP. And what this looks like is equals VLOOKUP. Open that up. It's going to ask me what the search key is. In this case, it's going to be my athlete name in B3. It's going to ask me where I want to look for it. In this case, we want to look for it in this whole um, table. So athlete info A to F. And it's going to ask me what I want to return. And in this case, we want to return the photo. So it's column one, two, three, four, five, six across. And we know that these things are not um, sorted. So I'm going to use the false and close that off. And we should return the athlete photo. And as I switch that, the athlete photo should change. And I'm just going to kind of center that and make sure it's right in the middle. And I think that that looks pretty good. So as we switch, we can actually see the athlete photo change. Now, for the other things, we're actually going to use a different formula to do this. And it's going to be a formula that we haven't used before in any of my videos. So I hope that it just teaches you a new way to do this. And for this formula to work, we need things to be spelled the exact same as they would be in the table that we're going to be recalling them from. So the first thing that we're going to want to um, return is the athlete name and I'm just going to center this and put it in the middle and then for these three or four rather we're going to use a drop down of all of the different factors that we have in our actual table so I'm going to select these four and I'm going to data um, data validation and I'm going to create a list from the actual athlete info so I'm going to create a list from athlete one to one all the way across I want to hit OK and save if I go back here, I should be able to check or select any of the things from my athlete info tab. So something like date of birth, age, sport, and position. So I'm just going to center these. And let's give them a little bit better font here. Let's say um, Lato, we'll make them bold and make them a bunch bigger. So like 24, uh, that's a bit big. Let's say 22. So these are the things that we actually want to recall. And to do this, we're gonna use a function called dget. And what dget does is it returns a value from a database based on a bunch of selections. So how this is gonna look is equals dget, open it up, and it's going to ask me where the database is. In this case, it's our athlete info. So I'm gonna to go to athlete info and select the whole thing, A to F, comma, now it's gonna ask me what the field is. Okay, so if I go back, in this case, um, it would be where we've selected our value, so I6, and then it's going to ask me what the actual criteria is. And for us, the criteria is going to be the athlete name. But if you notice, the database is stored in columns, and this is a row. So what we need to do is change this from a row to a column with transpose. So what that looks like is transpose 
open that up and we're going to select A3 to B3. And I'm just gonna lock those in because those are never going to change. So I'll hit F4 on that and close it off, close the whole thing off and hit enter. And I should get my athlete name. So what this is doing is looking through the whole database, A to F, it's looking for whatever we've selected and then it's returning it based on athlete name, athlete three. So in this case, it's returning athlete three. If we were to copy this down, you can see that now it's going to return um, a date of birth. Okay, so if we just format this as a date of birth, you can see that now it gives us our date of birth. If I were to copy it down one more time, give us our age, our sport, and our position. And if I change any of these, say to sport, you can see that they all change based on whatever I select. So that is how you make your athlete card a little bit more dynamic. And I'm just going to put all the formatting back to the way that we had it before. And I'll just make these sort of in the middle, um, fix all the alignment here, and I'll make them a bunch bigger. So we'll say Lato, bold, um, font 20. So there you go. And that is how we would create a dynamic athlete card with the dget function. And then in the next video, what we're going to do is start to organize our tests as well as we'll start some of the formulas to build out some of the longer term graphs. So I hope this video helps you out. And if it does, please like and subscribe to the channel and be sure to follow along to create the entire athlete dashboard project. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.